I'm grateful for another opportunity to answer your questions. I want to see how you all are doing in our comment sections. I see people commenting. I see people speaking. This is not a quiet church on this Thursday. I uh, ask you uh, while you're watching and those of you who are engaged, I hope you're good. I hope that you're very well, that you're doing okay. I really do uh, pray that you're okay. Um, and uh, before I get into that, the reason why I wanted to say that, listen, um, we're having lots of uh, people that are experiencing loss and, and uh, sickness and um, all different types of things that are happening that are real. I want you to check on people and really just reach out and make sure everyone is okay and, and fine. Don't, don't ever think that just because you see someone smiling that they're not fighting a hard battle. Uh, just because someone is smiling and such, uh, just because someone seems well doesn't mean all is well all the time. And sometimes you can't expect someone to tell you um, what might be going on with them, but you do want to just let's be uh, really, uh, um, it is about this season in our life, even as our, our particular body, our particular church. It's not about numbers as it is about engagement, uh, to be engaged with people. People really need family and support and help and guidance and all that type of stuff. So um, um, we had a great loss in the uh, kingdom yesterday. Uh, with um, evangelist Joyce Rogers. You might not have known her, but a wonderful, powerful lady uh, in the gospel. Um, and um, just so many things have transitioned that are happening that I'm, I'm uh, going to be probably speaking more about that later on through some other of the avenues because there are lots of people are transitioning. Um, and uh, many of you all, in the words of uh, Bishop Jakes, uh, are being past the mic. And so we do want to be praying for transition and shifting and what that looks like. So let's really, really keep each other in prayer. All right. I went deep and I want to come out of that because I'll stay there because it's very passionate to my heart. So a little to our, our ask PM. All right. First question. Do you believe deliverance has a process or is it a one shot deal? Do you believe deliverance has a process or is it a one shot deal? I want to answer that twofold. Um, um, is deliverance a process or is a one-shot deal? Um, I believe through salvation, um, it is a one-shot thing. Um, only by the reason that I believe that for scripture, it says it's by grace you are saved, not of works lest you should ever boast. Um, what that means is that um, what I have through salvation is through grace um, and through faith, of course, faith through grace. I mean, being able to, to believe um, that Jesus uh, was resurrected, he died for me, he got up for me, all that type of stuff, you know, to, to receive him into my heart. I don't believe that there's anything that I can do um, that will separate me from that confession, uh, even uh, even if in even in times uh, where we might not be living according to the confession of which we made, his love has not changed. His love never runs out. He is this love is never deficient. His love is never empty. Uh, as David even said, if I have to go to the abyss to go to the deepest parts of the of the earth, his love he will his presence will still even guide me and go there. Uh, so I do believe that that's a one shot thing. As it comes into what uh, we use uh, when you say the word process, it takes me to scripture, um, Romans, the 12th chapter and verse two, where it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That transformed um, is a part of um, being converted um, or uh, going through a process, um, or if you want to use the word, I believe the word for that, uh, the Greek word is connected to the word where we get metamorphosis, uh, which is to say it is a process, meaning when you see a caterpillar going up a, um, a, a particular tree or a limb or whatever, um, this caterpillar is slow and then it gets into the position of uh, hanging, and then it gets into the area of being uh, turned into a cocoon and then it stays there way, uh, I don't know how long that period of time is, but it stays there for a period of time before it becomes a butterfly. Uh, we shout about the butterfly or say how beautiful the butterfly is, uh, but the caterpillar would say how beautiful the process was in order for me to be a butterfly. <laughs> uh, in order for you to get through this 
stage that you have gained victory over the process is to be able to endure the inconvenience of learning, that endure um, not being there yet, but not where you were before that metamorphosis takes time. Wonderful thing about the process is in the midst of your process, in the midst of your metamorphosis, this is wonderful to my soul. The more I talk about it, the more stirred up I get. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Anyhow, the thing about the metamorphosis is that, um, my Lord, shake that off. The thing about metamorphosis is that um, I always thought about how that caterpillar in that particular cocoon um, basically is in a position or in a posture of um, exposure or in a posture of uh, being, um, uh, could be attacked at any moment, but you don't hear of, and I, I mean, you watch National Geographic and different things, wild uh, 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 National Geographic and all this stuff. You don't see of anything coming to stop the process of the caterpillar becoming what it is destined to be as a butterfly. And I think that that is, I don't think, I know that there's an act of God that even in a state where the caterpillar cannot Oh, Jesus, Woo. why'd you ask this question? This is wonderful to me. Woo. Even in the process of why, while the, the caterpillar cannot fight and fend for itself, the protected, the protection of God around that cocoon to say, you will be what I have designed you to be. Even if you don't even see your completely formed nature, I'm going to protect you while I'm forming you. <laughs> Woo! Lord, have mercy. This question, mercy, my Lord, Jesus, he will protect you while you're still forming. So I say that the answer that I'm trying to get to is that for those people, I do feel that there is a process of deliverance, that cocoon area of, of prayer, of small groups, um, of, of accountability, um, maybe some um, some uh, point, uh, how do I get to this point, you know, all these different things that are there um, that are exposing parts because I've left where I was and I'm not in that, but I am in this exposed um, to all different types of things, cocoon area that I have not become yet what I will be to fly away. But in this in-between area, I do need protection and I do need covering and I do need someone to help me um, uh, be patient while I become. <laughs> so I do believe, woo, I do believe that there is, woo, Jesus, my Lord today. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, my Lord. Uh, so I do believe that there is, um, I do believe that there is um, a, um, protection, um, not, excuse me, not protection. I don't mean that, uh, do, but I do believe that there is, um, a, a process and that you should submit to the process and that you should allow the process to be able to unfold and get connected to be able to connect with people to say, you know, I've not been here before. So what does that look like? And how do I do that? That's that area of becoming. So yes, I do believe that there's a process of becoming, uh, that you cannot skip over. You can't just be snatched out of something and then you jump into, I'm all right now got to walk through that particular process, but whew, that thing blessed me. Mercy. I don't know who else it blessed, but listen, don't, don't give up in your becoming. Somebody put that in the comment section, just down there. Don't give up in your becoming. Just don't give up in your becoming process. While you're still becoming, don't give up. Don't give up. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, don't give up. Don't give up. Hold on. I think that's worthy of something. Woo. All right. Yes. Just put that. Don't give up in your becoming. Whoever that's for that, that word that. Yeah. All right. Let me get out of that. OK, <laughs> Whew, I could stop right there. What advice would you give a newly saved Christian who seems to feel alone in their new walk? Um, I, I piggyback on the same thing. Uh, what advice would you give to a newly saved Christian who seems to feel alone in their walk? I give you the same thing uh, to be able to have the ability to submit to the process and submit to learning and 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 
want to be a part of community. I really, you cannot live life alone. You just can't. You can try. You'll be miserable. Uh, you need community. We need community. And I'm not speaking to you or at you. We, we are designed for relationship and community. We all need it. We have to have it. It's very, very important uh, that we have it and that we submit to it. Uh, so, um, community is everything. Um, so uh, as a new Christian or as a new believer, I don't want to use the word Christian, but as a new believer, um, you, this is a new life or experience. There are many people who, okay, you, for instance, you gave, you raised your hand on Sunday or you came down and gave a preacher your heart, gave God your hand. I mean, gave a preacher your hand, gave God your heart, uh, whatever it is. But now you're like, I don't know what this means. So community getting plugged in we try to provide resources we have even like a book i don't even know what that book is called um shoot i wish i knew what it was uh but we have a book that we try to provide to all those who just give their life uh, to christ so that they can at least read or you know, what happened what is the experience and what does that look like and then of course we uh try to make sure that we plug them in we used to have a a small group um, that was talking about, you know, a, a fresh start for believers. Um, um, I would like to offer that again. Of course, I just can't find anybody else to teach it. So I was teaching it and teaching something else, but that's neither here nor there. But to be able to provide, provide community is very, very important because it's almost like throwing someone into like uprooting you from whatever state you're in right now, for those of you who are not in Kentucky, but uprooting you from whatever state you're in and then throwing you into a different part of, not even out of this country, taking you to a different part of this, of the United States, whatever it is, New York, uh, West Virginia, uh, Tennessee, Georgia, Mississippi, uh, Ohio, Oklahoma, um, St. Louis, all those different places have their own way of operating. So if you jump into these different places, you got to know what streets you don't go down after a certain time. You got to know what the food is, like where, where the different places. I mean, every place is different. So um, when it comes to getting connected to the kingdom of God, uh, yes, it's a culture shock you, and you have to be connected uh, to people. So you will feel like you're alone uh, if you don't have community. Um, and I say community, I'm not talking about Sunday church. No, 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 that's a gathering. That's not community. That's not connection. That's a gathering where we come and our focus is, you know, um, is uh, vertical. Relationships are horizontal. Uh, to be able to say, I thank God for that, but I need people here, you know, so that's why we we really, really try to encourage um, our circles of growth and, and encourage, you know, uh, people to connect and be on teams and stuff like that, because it takes a bigger thing and moves into a smaller thing so that people are connected in interaction. So um, hopefully that helps you in the best way uh, that you possibly can. If you're connected to somebody, put in a comment section, I'm connected, I'm connected, because that's, that's really good. That's really good. Uh, connection is everything, everything. All right. Uh, what is the importance of impartation? Y'all deep today. <laughs> what is the importance of impartation? And what's the next question? All right. What's the importance of impartation? I was trying to see, so see how, how deep we get today. Y'all in deep waters. Uh, what is the importance of impartation? The word impart or the to uh, those of you who might not know what the word impartation is or means, um, it is the act of transfer. Um, or the act of, and some would say uh, in another way outside of, of um, um, Christianese uh, or church lingua or the kingdom language as mentorship or coaching or any of those types of things. And But I don't want to diminish it to that um, because that's really, that's that's um, uh, in more marketplace. I don't mean it in that way, but impartation um, is, uh, I would like to use the word, how about this? I would like to use the word not just impartation as far as someone speaking into you or laying hands on you or any of those things as we know. I would like to use the word discipleship. How important is discipleship? Now, what does discipleship mean? It means being a student of um, and those in the uh, Bible times and uh, when it was being written and well, not being written, but when in those early times they were, uh, they were students um, um, of a rabbi, rabbi meaning a Jewish teacher. Now, what that meant was, and you could sometimes, uh, some uh, historians have said, you can see um, who they were uh, studying under by how they operated or how they uh, walked. Sometimes they would walk like who was teaching them or they would talk like who was teaching them. Uh, sometimes you see that in um, it's singing or you see that in, in teaching or you see that in people's, uh, sometimes children, you can see that in their mannerisms. Like you can say, you so-and-so's 
child or whatever by who they've been around. Uh, that is in essence, long-term in partition discipleship because you have sat with, learned with, someone has the ability to speak into you. And I would like to say, unfortunately, there is not a lot of people who are open um, in this time for you to speak into them and um, open to discipleship. Um, there are a lot of people who want what they want and get it and I'll get a little bit of you. Uh, it's almost like uh, Bishop Jackson said oftentimes that people will, will retweet you and not know the mind behind the tweet. So we fall in love with what we see and not ever meet the person. So impartation, I believe, is important, um, and I believe it is needed as far as discipleship, not just of a person, no, uh, but of God and as and people that um, are godly or people that can, going back, maybe this is the thing for they going back to deliverance and stuff, that's impartation. Like, I've been here or I've conquered or I have dominion in that area or I have victory in this area. So let me walk you through or you walk with me through these different things. And uh, I do believe there is um, room and there is a place for uh, the laying on of hands and that type of um, uh, consecrated or or prophetic uh, impartation of I, I, I lay hands on you and you're going to be able to, um, the, what I have, God will do greater than you. Yes, I do believe that's biblical. I do believe that as well. Uh, but I do believe that a lot of people want Want the oil without the process or many people want the oil without the discipleship and i feel like what is needed in this time maybe i'll end here as far as these people who are who have left and these people who um who have left this earth uh people who have uh transitioned out of here um i don't think they want us to mimic what they did but to walk in what they had When I say mimic what they did, I'm not talking about, you know, a so-and-so could preach down the house. Yeah, but they 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 had a prayer life. <laughs> they had a study, they treated people right. They were, they were, they had accountability, they had people that supported them. They, I mean, there, there's a whole lot of different things that you don't get or we don't get. And I'm not take talking once again, not talking at you, but what we don't get by just watching someone on YouTube or just watching someone's live streaming or whatever, like this right here, that even as I'm doing right now. This is called a relationship. Like this is not just, this is not for the masses or for the people. This is not a prepared speech or prepared moment. This is no organ or anything. This is called just real talk, you know, for you to be able to see that beyond the microphone and beyond the sanctuary, beyond that type of stuff, that if you forget all that stuff, you see we're real beings real human beings. That's what Jesus did. He spent time, you know, just talking and, and spending time listening, not just talking, but as you're talking, listen two ears more than what we have mouth to be able to, to, to listen as much as we talk. So I, I could get and go down a rabbit trail with that. But when it comes to impartation, I do believe we want the hands without the feet. <laughs> We want someone's hands on us, but we don't want the feet. Uh, the scripture says, as I said Sunday, how beautiful are the feet, the life. <laughs> I don't want someone's hand. I want the feet to be able to learn. How do you walk in that? How, what does that look like? What does forgiveness look like? What does integrity look like? What does carrying that weight look like? I want that's impartation. The hands, you know, that's a demonstration is great, you know, and I'm, 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 I believe in it. And there are times for that. Yes. And I do believe in that praying for people and scripture says, any one of you is sick, call for the elders and they should lay hands. I, yes. I believe in all of that. Uh, but let us not get so enamored with the hands uh, that we're not studying the feet. Whew. My Lord, to be able to ask Lord, the Lord, Order, Lord, teach, let my, let my steps be ordered. That's the impartation, you know, to, I don't want to mimic the people and not, not find out how they walk. You know, I, my, my grandparents and some of my, my great mentors and people that I've been impacted by, you know, I don't have their hands anymore, but I've got traces of their steps. <laughs> I can see how they walked and how they maneuvered and how they did different things. Uh, I mean, yes, I would give anything just to have their hands again, but oh, I'm so grateful for their feet. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful for their walk. 
and of what it's taught me. And uh, that I believe to me uh, is the greater impartation uh, to be able to be as Jesus said to the disciples and greater, greater work shall you do. You would do even greater than I did because they have, they have traces of his steps. <laughs> Woo! If someone put in the comment section right now, I've, I've seen his footprint, just I've, I've seen his footprint in your life. That that is what will guide you. I need I need feet to walk to walk to walk uh, to to watch and and feet to be able to follow. I want to follow. I mean, if you and if you're going to follow a mentor or a counselor or or a coach or anybody, follow them as they follow Christ. Like as they follow Christ's feet, you follow. But if they they Christ's footsteps are not in front of them, and then you stay put. <laughs> Woo! This was good to my soul today. This was not man. Those questions, my Lord, I felt the oil of the presence of God on every last one of those questions. And so I'm not even going to go any further than that. I'm going to stay out of that and I'm going to log out and I'm going to gather myself and gather my belongings and get out of that. But I hope that that uh, bless you. For those of you who asked those questions, uh, it was good to me. If it wasn't good to y'all, let me tell you something. I, as y'all don't, If y'all don't know by now, I will shout myself. I don't need no help. <laughs> y'all already know how it goes. Yes, yes. So anyhow, I've enjoyed this time with you. I'm so sorry that I've missed you for the last few weeks. I hope that that few moments that we had together that you enjoyed it. I'll see you same time, same place next week. Now y'all govern yourselves accordingly, according to those announcements that I gave. I almost sound like Tabitha Brown. Now y'all go and have a good day. And if you can't have a good day, don't you go mess up nobody else's, all right? So y'all have an amazing day. I love you all. I love spending this time with you. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that these few minutes that I had, where you were taking lunch, whether you were driving, or whether you just needed something to encourage you, maybe something in that spoke to you, and maybe you had a good a little, good little laugh and a little giggle at the same time, I don't know, but whatever it was, and whatever you do, continue to keep growing. I love you all. I'll see you soon. Bye.